Dear student, in last video we have discussed the Gauss theorem along with its proof. Now today we will move towards the application of the Gauss theorem. So before starting the Gauss theorem application of this Gauss theorem, let us uh, uh, explain further the basics of the Gauss theorem. So actually Gauss theorem gives a relationship between the total flux passing through any closed surface and the net charge enclosed within that surface. So by the definition of the book you can say the exact definition the Gauss theorem states that the total flux through any closed surface is 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by that closed surface. So mathematically what we can write mathematically we can write the flux phi e is equal to q by epsilon zero. So flux phi e is equal to q by epsilon zero and uh, from the basic definition of the flux we have already discussed that from basic definition of the flux we can write flux phi e is equal to surface integration or better closed surface integration of e into ds fine so the electric flux basically uh, through a given area uh, held inside an electric field is the measure of the total number of electric field lines passing normally through that area so while choosing the gauss theorem obviously we should take the area vector so we come across many situations where we need to know not only the magnitude of the surface area but also its direction so direction of a planar area vector is specified by the normal to the plane so whenever we are going to uh, explain the gauss theorem so gaussian surface always we should take the area vector we should consider the area vector whenever we are taking to consider the electric flux obviously we should consider the uh, area vector without taking the uh, only the area we should go for area vector so the first application of the Gauss theorem is the electric field due to a uniformly charged infinite plane sheet so in that expression obviously you should apply Gauss theorem so as to calculate the electric field due to the infinite plane sheet of charge so in the figure you can see so a thin infinite plane sheet of charge with uniform surface charge density sigma we have considered and what we want to determine we want to determine the electric field at a point we have chosen that point as p so you can see in the figure that p is that point is situated at a distance r from the from the infinite plane sheet of charge fine so for the uh, sake of simplicity we have divided the Gaussian surface for in two halves so in the left half and right half or left plane and right plane or left end or right end so uh, as you know the electric field lines will move from positive side to negative side so since we don't have that 3d picture or we cannot make a 3d picture uh, on the paper so that is why we have uh, drawn the direction of electric field one is from right side and another is in left side so it is not like this that electric field lines are bi-directional it is unidirectional always passes from positive terminal to negative terminal but since we have to assume that uh, behind this plane surface we have another negative surface so obviously positive to negative the electric field line will move that is why we have drawn two direction of electric field line one is from it the at the right side and another is on the left side so in the right plane we have considered one point p in the left plane we have considered another point p dash fine so you can see from the figure it is clear so we have given the direction of the electric field and the electric field is capital E since it is a plane Gaussian surface or plane sheet of charge plane sheet of charge means the area of the cross section of the plane sheet should be exactly same and is uniformly distributed along the infinite plane sheet that is why 
at the left plane or left end we have cross sectional area A as well as at the right end we have cross sectional area again A. So by symmetry the electric field E that that points outward normal to the plane sheet so also it must have some magnitude and opposite direction at two points P and P dash equidistance from the sheet and on opposite sides so we choose cylindrical Gaussian surface of cross sectional area capital A and length 2R with its axis perpendicular to the sheet that is why you can see from the center of the sheet to point P we have given the distance R means from P to P dash distance is 2R means the Gaussian surface we have selected or we have chosen are of the cross sectional area A and of length 2R so as the electric field lines are always parallel to the curved surface of the cylinder so the flux through the curved surface is always zero so what we can calculate first we can calculate the total flux through the left plane